Hello, and welcome to another Old Car Schmidt. In this episode, we're going to go through the story of how we acquired this railroad car and moved it up and managed to save it from being scrapped. On November 7th, 2021, a friend of mine sent me a link on Facebook Marketplace for an old railroad car that was for sale for $4,000. The railroad car was located on property that did not belong to the seller, and the car needed to be sold and moved quickly, otherwise it would be cut up for scrap. I didn't want to see this happen, so I decided to investigate. The car was actually a caboose. Portland Terminal Railroad PTM-2, originally built as an AAR 40-foot steel boxcar, Main Central Railroad 4373, in 1939. The car was rebuilt into a caboose by the Maine Central Railroad's Waterville, Maine shops. Two other cars were converted, PTM-1 in 1968, PTM-2 in 1968, and PTM-3 in 1971. This trio served the Portland, Maine area from 1968 until 1983 or 1984 when the Portland Terminal Railroad and Maine Central Railroads were absorbed into Guilford Transportation Industries. These cars worked the Deering job and Yard 8 as well as the Cumberland Mills job on the Maine Central Railroad's Mountain Division. PTM-1 was saved and became an ice cream stand. PTM-3 was scrapped and PTM-2 went to New York State to an equipment dealer who sold the car minus its trucks or wheel sets to a railroad car collector. This collector shipped it to a cement company gravel pit in Kingston, New Hampshire where it sat for the next 25 to 30 years. Another friend of mine was interested in buying the car as well. We decided to partner the deal and save the car from being scrapped. The seller informed us that due to being so late in the year, we would have an extension. We would have until June the 1st, 2022, to move the car off the property. Otherwise, the ownership of the caboose would revert back to the seller we would forfeit our $4,000 and he would shred the car for scrap. On December 13th, 2021, we met with the seller to look at PTM2 in the gravel pit. The seller didn't own the land and the cement company wanted the car out of there, fast. The car seemed in pretty fair shape, just rusty and sitting in a very muddy area. Although the caboose needed a lot of work, we both felt that it had potential. Neither of us had a place to put the car, but I had a plan. I am on the board of directors of a railroad museum in Bartlett, New Hampshire, the Bartlett Roundhouse Preservation Society. We are currently restoring a locomotive roundhouse built in 1887 by the Portland and Ogdensburg Railroad which later became the Maine Central's Mountain Division and today is owned by the state of New Hampshire. It is currently operated by the Conway Scenic Railroad. We decided to donate PTM2 to the Bartlett Roundhouse Preservation Society since Portland Terminal Snowplow PTM68 was already at the museum. Portland Terminal PTM2 would be a good addition to the museum, we felt. I located a pair of caboose trucks and began making arrangements between the Conway Scenic Railroad 
in the state of New Hampshire who owns the property and the railroad line. Progress thus far has been slow and may take years. I was running out of time and I had to move quickly. One of my best friends agreed to allow me to keep the caboose on his property until someday when it can be moved to Bartlett. I still needed to move quickly as June 1st would be coming up fast. The first thing that needed to be done was to cut the trees growing around the railroad car. All right. Let's see what it looks like. Which end are we gonna? Do? I'm thinking probably the opposite end from where you are. Yeah. We'll get the bottom of the knuckle here. Oh, okay. With the trees cut, I contacted a crane operator to lift and move the car so that it could be loaded onto a Landau trailer truck. However, the soft ground and mud that the car was sitting on made him uneasy about doing the job the ground would have to be dug out and made ready for the crane. I would need to get the cement company to assist with this job. After clearing away the pile of tires and leveling the ground around the car, the caboose would need to be set on cribbing so that the crane operator could get his straps under it and lift it up. Unfortunately, getting all of this to happen took a lot longer than expected. June 1st came and went but the seller of the caboose gave me a 30-day extension because I was clearly making an effort to move the car. Once again, the cement company came to our rescue.